The calls start the same way. A car won't start in the cold. It stalls at a red light. The check engine light comes on, then comes back on, blinking like a nervous tick. Customers come into my shop frustrated, holding a set of keys to a car they thought was a good idea. The trouble with E85 is the ethanol itself. It's hygroscopic, meaning it absorbs water right out of the air in your fuel tank. That water separates and sinks, creating a corrosive puddle right where your fuel pump lives. This leads directly to corrosion. We started seeing rusted fuel tanks, sending units with eaten away contacts and failed fuel pumps covered in rust. Problems we never saw with gasoline. Ethanol is a fantastic solvent. In an older fuel system, that's a disaster. Over years, gasoline leaves a harmless layer of varnish and sediment. But E85 acts like a cleaner, dissolving all that grime. The problem is, all that loosened junk has to go somewhere. First, it overwhelms the fuel filter, clogging it solid. Fuel pressure drops and the car sputters. If the gunk gets past the filter, it clogs the fuel injectors. Instead of a fine mist, you get a weak dribble, causing misfires and a rough idle. The worst problems with E85 show up in cars that don't get driven every day. A car that sits for weeks or months is a perfect storm for flex fuel failure. When it sits, phase separation creates a corrosive layer of ethanol and water at the bottom of the tank. The fuel pump gets submerged in this cocktail, and we've seen them rust solid after just one winter. Injectors also suffer, with ethanol gumming them up and gluing them shut, causing dead misfires. The problems were a slow burn, often appearing only after the warranty expired, leaving owners to foot the bill. What wasn't was the hidden, long-term cost of ownership. Using E85 meant a 25-30% to 30 drop in mileage, erasing any savings at the pump. It but the real cost came from repairs. A fuel pump replacement can run over $1,500. They were premature system failures. The manufacturer got their credits, but the second or third owner inherited a ticking time bomb, a car that promised flexibility but delivered anxiety and massive repair bills.